Greetings and welcome to ValorTube.com. My name is Paul Lear. I am an original content provider at ValorTube.com. I'd like to welcome everybody to This Week in Prophecy. And the news flow continues. Uh, and as usual, not disappointed, had to trim some of the topics. I left out China and all their happenings with Taiwan. They continue to be aggressive, uh, flying fighter jets and so forth in the Taiwanese space, upwards of 30 a day, I think is the latest count. Um, but there are other things going on we're going to talk about. We're going to start out uh, in the North Atlantic off the northwest coast of Africa, uh, La Palma in the Canary Islands. Uh, Cumbra v. Eha volcano continues to erupt and give you guys a little perspective on where this thing's located. Um, zero in off the, the Northwest coast. And the thing too is, you know, again, this is, this is one Island. This is one volcano. And, um, and that's all that's taken place. And, and here's what's, what's going on currently. Um, the the dome of the volcano has collapsed and what used to be three and four vents is now down to one volcano this is a live feed and as we take a look at this i've got you know a handful of scriptures and you know again the end time scenario talks about volcanic activity as a global event and i don't want to minimize what's taking place here on this island i think you have eighty five thousand people who live there um and I think there have been ten to 15,000 evacuated. The lava flow on this thing is increasing by the day. I think where it says day 15, so we're good two weeks in. But just listen to these scripture references as you watch this. Psalm 97, 5, the mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. So, I mean, that's pretty much what that looks like. That mountain is melting. Uh, but again, it's plural, mountains plural, melt like wax. Uh, Isaiah 24, verse 1, Behold, the Lord lays waste, lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and scatters its inhabitants. And, and that's one, and you look at Isaiah 24, that talks about the global nature of these volcanic events, geologic events, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. Micah 1 verse 4 in the mountains, again plural, will melt under him and the valleys will split open like wax before fire, like waters poured down a steep place. Nahum 1 verse 5, mountains quake because of him and the hills dissolve. Indeed, the earth is upheaved by his presence in the world and all the inhabitants in it. Um, and that's what it looks like. I mean, so the imagery from these Old Testament prophets now, they, they, no way they could have envisioned some twenty-five to 2,700 years, 3,000 years later, we would be sitting here. I mean, here I'm sitting in the middle of the North American continent, and I'm watching a live stream of what's happening in an island off the coast of Africa. But it's the time we live in. We can see these things. You can see this lava pouring down what used to be part of a mountain, like wax, pretty well like it's described. And this, and then we'll go to, uh, this is from knock knob. He's on Twitter or she, I'm assuming it's a, he, I don't know. Um, Hayes observed today comes from dust from Sahara and volcanic ash from the Cumbra Vieja volcano in La Palma, Canary islands. Presence of gas, sulfur dioxide is colorless, does not cloud the atmosphere and is seen to be present only by images from Copernicus satellite. So that's EU satellite. But again, follow the cursor. That's everything coming off the coast of Africa and what's coming out of this volcano with sulfur dioxide. Highly recommend following Knock Knob on Twitter. Unbelievable stuff. And I'll show this. This is like a 30 minute video compressed. And this shows when this thing blows. It was like three vents and now it's one and you can watch part of this mountain collapse and all this lava just dump out of here like water. I mean, it's pretty well like the mica verse. 
and the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will split open like wax before fire, like waters poured down a steep place. I mean, that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, but again, just kind of scrolling down through here, he's got all kinds of um, videos following um, the happenings in the Canary Islands. Um, it's hit the ocean now. So, you know, of course, the doomsday scenario is this thing splits like a quarter to a fifth of the island and falls into the ocean and creates this massive tidal wave that pretty much goes across the Atlantic and even up into parts of Western Europe. And you can see, it's like if you, you know, you see the kids jumping off the diving board and doing a cannonball into the pool. It's the same concept, except for this is a really big cannonball and part of an island that displaces all this water. And the ripple effect of it is the idea now. Will that actually happen? I don't know. But the, the fun thing, my wife and I were have been looking for this because the History Channel did this thing a few years ago. This very scenario, just, you know, of course, scaring the hell out of everybody. You know, the whole East Coast is going to die. The Caribbean Sea and the islands, the islands in the Caribbean are going under and anywhere from 100 to 150 foot wall of water, tidal wave, east coast of South America, scaring everybody to death. You can't find that now. It was done by the History Channel. I think the BBC did some things on it. And, you know, there were there were a few of those that you could find it when this thing first started to erupt or when there were earthquakes. Well, now that this appears to be getting a little bit more serious, it's a lot harder to find and we got all these experts out there saying, don't worry, it's no big deal. And the latest expert report I got today said that when this cone on the volcano collapsed, this is completely normal and we are to expect more lava to start flowing. So, okay, we'll, we'll listen to the experts. Um, but anyhow, check out Knock Knob on Twitter. Got all kinds of stuff regarding this volcano. Has videos, pictures. Um, well, there you can see that stuff coming right off over the edge of the island, which now, which is now forming new land. And you can just see this lava continuing to dump into the Atlantic. And there's more of it now because there's more lava being released from the volcano. So, and on that front, we're going to move to Ezekiel 38 and 39 and the two main actors, uh, Magog, that'd be modern day Russia. In Turkey, so Meshach, Tubal, Beth the Garma, Gomer, uh, the two leaders got together earlier this week. Putin and Erdogan all smiles in Sochi after Turkish leader voiced frustration with Biden and declared intent to move closer to Russia. Now, Erdogan said the meeting with Biden was a disaster when he met with him in New York City. So, so Erdogan took it upon himself to get together with Putin in Sochi. Uh, we'll show you where Sochi is. Um, Sochi's down here on the Black Sea. It's where the, there it is, right there. It's where the uh, Winter Olympics were not too long ago. So this is where Vlad and Rechep decided to get together, have their little summit. And... Um, Apparently, everything according to the, the spin masters coming out of Turkey and Russia, this was a, a great meeting. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. Uh, Turkey has some issues with Russia. Turkey does not recognize Russia's annexation of the Crimea. Um, Turkey still considers, and that's this point right here, the Crimean Peninsula on the Black Sea. Turkey considers that still to be part of Ukraine. Um, Russia says it's theirs. Erdogan disagrees, uh, and even made the comment in the UN general assembly calling Crimea a part of Ukraine whose annexation we do not recognize, but they did get together and they shared tweets, a little bromance budding here. The Republic of Turkey director of communications, president Erdogan 
We departed Sochi after a fruitful meeting with my counterpart, Putin. There they are. They're all smiles, looking good. Uh, and then the president of Russia, he, he put one out there, all smiling. Notice Vlad's not looking at Recep as he shakes his hand. And according to the transcript, Putin was delighted that our relations continue to develop and are progressing in a positive manner. And Russia and Turkey are cooperating quite successfully on the international stage, including on Syria and Libya. So look at the happy boys shaking hands, looking good. Uh, now, this is funny. I even discussed COVID vaccine and antibody levels. I don't speak Russian or whatever language is being spoken in Turkey, uh, but somebody understood it. Just a causal chat between Erdogan and Putin. Erdogan, what's your antibody level? Putin, 15, 16. Erdogan says, thinks that's too low. And Putin informs Erdogan, our calculations are different and you should get the Sputnik 5 to strengthen your immunity. Erdogan tells him I've received my third shot. So making sure <laughs> both the boys <laughs> have their immunity built up. And again, this is coming out of, this is Russia times RT.com. So this is clearly the Russian pers- per- perspective. Also uh, another article coming out of RT Turkey's move to buy S 400 anti-aircraft system from Russia is due to America's refusal to sell Ankara the Patriot missile battery. And that's Erdogan saying that. And he then gets kind of bows up a little bit and say, you know, we can buy our own weapons. And uh, he explained that to the NATO secretary general. He explained it to Trump and he explained it to, to Biden. So Erdogan, we, we, we can do whatever we want. Okay. So, um, and they don't even have to buy the S 400s from the, <laughs> from the Russians, but you know, and the issue is Turkey's supposed to be a member of NATO, but Turkey is also, uh, moving closer to Russia, you know, and another point that came up is that the Turks have no regard for president Bashar Assad in Syria and Russia is supporting president Assad in Syria. So they're, it's not all wonderful. They've got some issues. Uh, but they're even talking about working together on potentially new nuclear facilities in Turkey, building submarines. Uh, they had a great time. And oh, here's the here's the quote from uh, Erdogan in the discussions with Mr. Biden that I'd been anticipating. There wasn't the desired outcome. As two NATO countries, we need to be at a different point. And the point was, is that Erdogan wanted Patriot missile batteries from the United States. Biden said no. Erdogan didn't like it. So Turkey is mulling placing new orders. They've already ordered some of the Russian uh, missile systems, anti-war plane. Uh, And it wouldn't be surprising. I frankly expect them to do that. Um, They're going to buy more stuff from the Russians. I mean, scripture tells us that, you know, Magog and, you know, what would be modern day Russia and modern day Turkey will come together along with Iran. We're going to touch on Iran here in a little bit. They're all going to get together to go invade Israel. And um, and again, this is the Russian perspective now. Big shout out to Checkmate. Checkmate was very instrumental in pulling some of these resources for this report. Highly recommend you guys take a listen. Look at what Checkmate is putting up at ValorTube.com. He's got great, great resources, knows the region, understands what's going on, you want to really know what's taking place, you need to listen to this guy and check him out. And he got this from uh, Radio Free Europe. Putin hails compromise, compromises with Erdogan at Sochi Talks. And so compromises to me, that kind of sounds like Erdogan did what Putin wanted him to. Um, that's just a bald guy perspective and interpretation of the situation. And again, they met September 29th. Now the Radio Free Europe breaks this down. Uh, Set down for about three hours of talks in Sochi. Putin said that relations between Moscow and Ankara were de- developing positively thanks to their ability to find compromises. And Putin says, you know, negotiations are sometimes difficult, but with a positive final result. 
Erdogan believed that there is a great benefit in continuing our Turkish-Russian relations by strengthening them every day. And they, they both thought it was useful. Useful. All right. And then the, the article goes on to talk about uh, the views they both have in Syria. There are some disagree- disagreements in Syria. There are disagreements in the Southern Caucus, again, in, in and around the Crimea. Uh, and there's also some things uh, developing with Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, is aligned with Turkey. Um Azerbaijan, let's just pull up a map here and talk about this here briefly because this is gonna this is gonna matter later with Iran. So Armenia is by and large a Christian country that is supported by the Russians. Azerbaijan, Muslim country supported by the Turks. Uh, and so Turkey kind of stands with Azerbaijan and you know, this is going to get real complicated here later in this report. And you guys want to just take a look at this map to try to get an understanding of what's going on. The meeting again was up here in Sochi, Russia. And, and we have Turkey and Azerbaijan on one front. You have Russia and Armenia on another front. And then you have Iran down here irritated with Azerbaijan uh, for arresting Iranian truckers. And they're moving a whole bunch of armaments up here to the border. And somehow these three are going to get together and unite at some point. They're not, they're not all on the same page right now, but it's going to happen. Scripture says they are making close or steps to get closer. Uh, and again, we talked about Ukraine S-400 missile systems. They disagree in Libya. Uh, now, both of them, both Russia and Turkey are supporting a Qaddafi for president. Um, <laughs> Turkey supporting the one that's been in jail, just released from jail. Um, it's a mess. And then there's the issue of natural gas, which we're going to talk about that too. And that's ultimately, I think that's the hook that gets these three together is because Israel has got a pile of natural gas and it's not all online yet, but it's coming. And we're going to talk about that right now. Uh, European gas prices hit an all-time high uh, this past week. And the reason they've hit an all-time high, uh, Russian flows slump. Now, to listen to this, this is from Reuters, and Reuters would let you believe it's just like, oh, the flows are slumping. Well, European gas prices surged because Russia kept a tight lid on supply, signaling further price pressures on European consumers heading into the winter heating system. Russian gas supplier um, fell by almost 77% from Thursday, according to data from grid operator Gascade, as Kremlin-controlled Gazprom. Remember that company. That they, they're, they're all over the place in the Middle East. Gazprom, state run by the by the Russians, they're trying to get their fingers in as much stuff as they can, and they booked only a third of its available capacity for October. So they have cut production to Europe anywhere from sixty six to seventy seven percent. You know, moving forward into October, the drop comes at a critical juncture for Europeans who are facing surging utility bills amid a flight for supply. Uh, Gazprom's decision not to book for October the full capacity available at one of the main pipelines that delivers gas to Germany poses an increased tightening risk to Northwestern European gas balances and further upside risk to prices this winter. And that's from Goldman Sachs. Um, The November gas price at the Dutch hub, which is the European benchmark, hit an all-time high of 97.73 euros per megawatt hour, up 400% this year. So, I mean, just imagine, you know, if our gas, or not our gas, but our electric bills go up 400% from where they are now, we'd be 
screaming and yelling. Uh, demand for gas has soared post pandemic. Uh, stiff competition from suppliers. China wants more, seeking more liquefied gas. Uh, Gazprom has come in for criticism because they're, you know, affecting they're they're effectively manipulating the price by cutting the supply. So want to keep an eye on that and here's the backdrop and why this is all going to matter israel's delek finalizes sale of tamar gas stake to abu dhabi's muba dalla probably butchered those names but at any rate delek drilling ceo yossi abu on complete on completion the deal will represent one of the largest transactions between an israeli entity and an Arab entity, which shows how Israel's natural gas resources can be a source of collaboration between the nations. And I think Delec is partly owned by uh, Chevron, if I'm not mistaken, which is a U.S. company. And they're going to sell 22% stake in the eastern Mediterranean to Mar gas field to Abu Dhabi's Mubadala Petroleum for about a billion dollars. Um you know, and again, it's part of the Abraham Accords. That's why this happened. Um, a huge deal with a company from the United Arab Emirates alongside exporting gas to Egypt and Jordan are actions on the ground and exactly how to build a new Middle East. That's, you know, the from the like drilling. But, but we'll, what will be interesting is when, um, you know, this gas field which is located out here in, in the Mediterranean, when they start distributing this stuff um, to Western, Western Europe, you know, now right now, Russia and the boys, Vladimir, they're making about four, 400% more than what they're used to making off the spot price of natural gas by cutting the supply. But at some point, Israel's going to see opportunity have the ability to deliver it <clears throat> and Western Europe is going to benefit and it will pretty much uh, stop the price from going so high. But for now, that's what's taking place. And I think this will be the, the definitive hook that brings Gog from the remote north to want to come against Israel. I just, the, the more this goes and you watch how this is all playing out, it's all going to be about money. And so with that, we're going to turn to Iran. Uh, and here's the headlines. If you guys want to read this a little bit further, you can you can pull this up. This is from dailymail.co.uk. Um, Iran warns war with Israel has already begun and says the entire crisis in the region is Israel's fault. And that's Saeed. Khatib Zadah, spokesman for the Iranian Foreign Ministry, reported this statement, and it was picked up, uh, alleged that Israel has murdered nuclear scientists and harmed the Iranian people, and they are the, it's Israel's fault, the reason there's a crisis in the region. Uh, Khatib Zadah also condemned Israel for sending Foreign Minister Yair Lapid to meet with the King of Bahrain on Thursday in disapproval of the nation's developing relations. So clearly Iran's upset with the Abraham Accords and um, scolding them <laughs> for, for trying to get along. But if you want to read this, and I think, I think uh, Checkmate sent me this article as well. And I think he sent me, Checkmate sent me this, Iran holds war games near Azerbaijani border. Uh, and we're going to go back to the map and zero in on this part of the, right here. Here's Tehran, uh, south of the Caspian Sea. <clears throat> Here's the border with Azerbaijan. And we're going to get into the details as to why this is. Um, Iran has announced that it's conducting large scale military exercises near the Azerbaijani border as tensions between the two countries continue to escalate. I'm going to replay this video. Whoops. Get back there. I did not want to do that. Um, 
Iran has stepped up their propaganda game. They got some ominous music. So if you guys were to click on this and listen to it, I mean, they're trying to scare you and show you all the stuff. And they sent truckload after truckload after truckload of military equipment to the northwest regions of Iran. And this was on September 30th. And also, what they didn't share uh, <laughs> during the exercises, they had some helicopters out there doing some maneuvers and they were doing live fire. One of the helicopter helicopters opened fire on their own positions and killed three Iraqi soldiers. That was not reported in this article, but I'd seen that somewhere else. Um, which you can see, and they are leaving the gate of Tehran and they are sending all these trucks with tanks to the border. Um, uh, and nobody seems to understand why this was taking place. And it's like uh, Turkish Anadolu Agency. Now, this is, again, the Turks don't agree with this. Why now? Why exactly on our border? These questions are being asked by the Azerbaijani public, not me. So the Turks supporting Azerbaijan uh, with everything that's going on. Um, and then there was this quote on September 30th. So what, three, four days ago, just imagine that a war breaks out with Azerbaijan, the Islamic Republic can fire 1,000 ballistic missiles and hit 1,000 key points. The war will end in one day, and there will be no time to use other equipment. So, you know, don't, don't pay attention to bragging by the Azerbaijani officials. That's okay. Um... And again, looking at the tweet, Iranian army just announced that it's going to hold its largest exercises in northwest of Iran. The exercise is a response to the provocate, provocative statements of Aliyev, president of Azerbaijan Republic, and also arrest of Iranian truck drivers by Azerbaijan border guard. Um, I didn't care for that. And of course, it was Israel's fault. Uh, where is the quote? Um they essentially, yeah, one notable feature of Iran's recent rhetorical campaign uh, ties with Israel. Now, Iran hardly needs a reason to bring up the, quote, Zionist regime to justify some policy, but they think Iran, here, here's the quote, Iran will not tolerate its neighbors becoming a safe haven and a base for the present of anti-security activities of the fake Zionist regime, and that's Brigadier General Mohammed Pakpour, commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Ground Force. Um, and they're upset with Azerbaijan because they also are becoming closer with Israel. And so, you know, they think the boogeyman Israel's behind some of this stuff. So they've got problems with that. Um, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan's close ties with Israel based on gas sales in one direction, weapon sales in another, as well as shared mistrust of Iran are not a new story, but that's what's driving some of this. Otherwise, everybody's like, what's the deal? What do you need? What do you, what do you need to do this for? So, and they're, and they're still up there. Um, and then there's this again, this is from knock knob. We've got, uh, there's, this is a grand finale of this dancer. These are Iranian troops. Highly recommend this tweet um, and listen to the music. We, <laughs> an Iranian soldier is demonstrating his dance moves for the troops. Some good, clean entertainment for the troops after the, um, the military exercises. Um, check it out. They like that one. They really applaud that, whatever that is. So pull this up at Knock Knob. Iranian soldier demonstrates his dance moves. It's even better with the music. I just can't pull it up while I'm doing this. Um, and so we move on. We're not going to move on a whole lot because, uh, again, this has to do, this is from uh, Checkmate, sent me this as well, notified me of this. Uh, this is from Iran. We have established six armies outside our borders. And this is by an Iranian, this is a quote from 
an Iranian military commander, um, makes, made the comment, quote, six armies outside of its borders that work for it. And Golam Ali Rashid, uh, commander of what is known as the headquarters of Qatam al Ambiya. And he's the former, uh, the former commander has to sit in statements carried by the Iranian Mir agency that Qasem Soleimani, the former commander of the Quds force and the Quds force, Quds is what, what they refer to as that's how they refer to Jerusalem. So they have a, an army that is designated for the taking of Jerusalem. Uh, six organized armies, um, outside of Iranian territory. Um, and here they are, Lebanese, Hezbollah, Hamas, and Jihad movements, so that'd be the Gaza Strip, regime forces in Syria, Iraqi popular mobilization forces, and the Houthi militia in Yemen. All of these forces represent a deterrent force for Iran. And so we'll go back to the to our map and get a really good idea. Um so here are the Houthis down here, uh, stuff in Syria, in and around the Golan. They have stuff in Lebanon, and they have stuff down here. Um, I mean, they've got Israel surrounded, and they're making no bones what they want to do. And that's the thing, too. Pay attention to what these people say. They're not, this isn't some, some wacko or some fringe group in the United States reporting on this. Th these are actual quotes from these people and what they intend to do. So, and we're going to close with what is uh, Tropical Storm Shaheen. And of all places, I mean, this thing is absolutely zeroed in on the Gulf of Oman and is headed toward the Straits of Hormuz and will likely disrupt uh, the flow of commerce, oil, gas out of the Persian Gulf. Um, eventually around the Arabian Peninsula. But how about that? Direct shot. And Jesus said, the waves and the seas shall roar. So appreciate you guys following along this week. Hope you enjoyed this week in prophecy and look forward to doing it again next week. Please check out ValorTube.com. Also another shout out again to Checkmate. Really appreciate all of his assistance and his insights. Highly recommend following him if you want to know what's going on internationally in and around the Middle East. Guy, the guy's paying attention. Uh, take care. Have a good week. Later. Bye.